Now, let's look at delay distortion. Delay distortion occurs because the velocity of the propagation of the signal through the guided medium varies with frequency. So I'm moving a signal from one point to the other. Now the velocity or the speed at which I'm transmitting that, once there is delay in that transmission, then we call that the delay distortion. This causes various frequency components of a signal to arrive at the receiver at different times. Now, if you take the wireless medium, you realize that the wireless media has various ways of receiving data. It comes, data comes to it from various channels. Now, if one data delays or one channel delays, the whole data is being received at the end of the signal or at the end of the receiver also delays. Now, delay distortion is particularly critical for digital data and causes what is called the intersymbol interference. Intersymbol interference. So intersymbol interference is due to delay distortion peculiar to digital data. Mind you, we said digital data are in zeros and ones. So once that happens, it causes a lot of danger to the transmission or to the signal being transmitted. Then we have noise. Noise is an additional signal inserted to the original signal between the transmitter and the receiver. So it's, it's, in the, it's the introduction of another signal. But here, this signal is an unwanted signal. And noise is a major limiting factor in communication system. Now, noise can be divided into four categories. We have the thermal noise, we have the intermodulation, then we have crosstalk, then we have the impulse noise. So thermal, intermodulation, crosstalk, then impulse noise. Now thermal noise is due to the agitation of electrons, which is present in all electronic devices and transmission media. And it is usually uniformly distributed across the bandwidth using the or across the bandwidth usually used in communication system and are also referred to as white noise so thermal noise can be referred to as white noise and this can be eliminated and therefore places an upper bound on communication system performance now thermal noise is not you, you can't eliminate thermal noise every signal that you send has a little bit of noise in there so if i'm sending data from one end to the other be sure that there will be thermal noise just that this thermal noise is insignificant but it doesn't mean that there's no noise in whatever data you are transmitting every data being transmitted has a little bit of noise component in there then we have the intermodulation noise now here when signal at different frequencies share the same transmission medium the result may be intermodulation noise and its effect is that it produces signals at various or varying frequencies that is the sum or difference of the two original frequencies or multiples of these frequencies it produces what is known as the non non linearity in the transmitter the receiver and the intervening transmission medium so the transmitter the receiver and the transmission medium then we have crosstalk this is an unwanted coupling between two or more signal paths where two paths get to crisscross this is known as the crosstalk and it can occur by electro, uh, electrical coupling between nearby twisted pairs, pair wires or cosia cables that are or causal cable lines that carry they are carrying multiple signals now when this path cross then we call that as a crosstalk and it can also occur when unwanted signals are picked up by the microwave antennas we'll look at microwave antennas later in this course now impulse we want to look at impulse noise impulse noise is a non-continuous consisting of or is a non-continuous signal consisting of irregular pulses or noise spikes of short duration 
and of relative or relatively high amplitude. This is generated from a variety of causes, including external electromagnetic disturbance. It is generally only a minor disturbance for analog data, but with regards to digital data, this is uh, a primary source of error within, in, in data communication for digital data. Now let's look at channel capacity. Channel capacity is the rate at which data can be transmitted over a given uh, communication path or channel under some given conditions. There are four concepts with regards to the channel capacity. First is the data rate, and this is the rate measured in bits per second, BPS, at which data can be communicated. So that's data rate. Then we have bandwidth, which is the bandwidth of the transmitted signal, or the width of the transmitted signal as constrained by the transmitter. And we have varying bandwidth with regards to transmitters. This is expressed in cycles per second or measured in hertz. Then, of course, we have noise, again, which is the average level of noise over the communication path. Then we have the error rate, the rate at which errors occur in our communication system. So th these are the four concepts with regards to channel capacity. Now, we have the, with regards to bandwidth, we have what is called the Nyquist bandwidth. Now, in a noise-free channel, a noise-free channel is a channel without noise, a channel where we, we assume that there is no noise. Earlier on, I said that every transmission, every signal that is being transmitted, it has a little bit of noise. Theoretically, we can talk about a noise-free channel. The only limitation on the data rate is the bandwidth of the signal. So Nyquist states that if the data rate or if the rate of signal transmission is twice the bandwidth, then a signal with frequency no greater than W is sufficient to carry the data rate. So if I'm moving data from one point to the other, right, I need twice the bandwidth to be able to carry that data across. Now this limitation is caused by the intersymbol interference due to delay distortion. So Nyquist is saying that now if the rate of transmission, the rate of signal transmission is twice your bandwidth, then a signal with frequency not greater than W, which is the bandwidth, is sufficient to carry your data through, or to carry your data through the data rate, or using some amount of data rate. Now, Nyquist came up with a formula for capacity, and this is given by 2W log to the base 2 of M. Now here, W is our bandwidth, M is the number of discrete signal or voltage levels that we have. Now, Nyquist formula is mostly used, or is the theoretical uh, channel capacity that we have. Now, we'll take a question that can, that will enable us to calculate the Nyquist formula. Now, consider a noiseless channel with a bandwidth of 3000 hex, transmitting a signal with two signal levels. Here we are asked to calculate the maximum bit rate, which is also known as the Nyquist uh, bandwidth. So we, here we are asked to find C. Now, we are going to show how to calculate the maximum bit rate later in this lecture. Now let's look at the Shannon capacity. Now, Let's consider the relation between data rate, noise, and error rate. Now, it's expected that for some given noise level, higher rates will result to higher errors. So once I have higher rates, 
it's expected that I have more errors in there. Now, Shannon developed a formula relating this to signal to noise ratio, signal to noise ratio, which is known as SNR, or which is abbreviated as SNR, and is measured in decibels. Now, signal to noise ratio is the rate of the power in a signal to the power contained in the noise that is present at a particular point in the transmission. Now, like I said earlier on, this is given by S over N measured in decibels. And this is 10 log signal power over noise power. Signal power over noise power. Earlier on, we saw the calculation involving the decibel, which is 10 log 10 of the uh, received uh, power over the initial power. It's the same concept that Shannon capacity is using. Here, we are finding 10 log 10 of the signal power over noise power. Now, Shannon capacity is also, can also be rewritten as W log to the base 2, 1 plus S on N, where S is the signal power and N is the noise power. Now C is the capacity of the channel and is measured in beats per second and W is the bandwidth of the channel which is measured in hertz. This brings us to the end of section 3. We'll take some series of questions that has to do with Nyquist bandwidth and channel capacity.